Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I got this uh, boxed item uh, recently from uh, eBay from someone uh, who told me that it's boxed when it's an Acorn Electron um, computer from the 80s but it's not boxed, it came to me like only in poly but um, yeah, I know it's hard to keep the, the boxes after 40 years. So I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it looks okay, it looks full. I'm pretty impressed the way he managed to get everything that I need in the box. Um, it's an introductory cassette, um, like a bonus gift kind of uh, programming uh, book with uh, listings that I can type at some point. Uh, introductory tapes are hard to find. Nobody <laughs> used to have them after um, the very first um, setup um, because it's really what it is. It's an introductory tape. It teaches you how to type, stuff like that, the basics around the computer and all that. And it um, could be kind of boring. So I'm happy that this one is intact. Um, the uh, owner's manual here, user's guide, um, the introductory tape, plus uh, the extra bonus um, book with programs. Um, but of course, what I have to check is really that the computer works. It's, this is my priority, always my priority to check if the computer is in good shape, um, not damaged. Um, or anything so I'm pretty happy with the package let's uh, get on and check the machine and as I always say first of all we need to check the power brick this one here is the original Acorn computers uh, power brick um, which uh, gives us um, AC current mm, roughly 19 volts or something um, and then the rectification is happening inside the computer so we can get uh, the 5 volts DC that the circuit needs. Um, so first thing is to check the um, voltage but uh, let me just first pull out the computer which looks intact in great condition by the looks of it I mean it's it looks great uh, in a, a plastic bag protected very nice very well preserved and so here um, is the brick I need to check first because I need to power up the machine if everything is alright and check uh, and this is the first thing to do at all times um, I'm happy because it's the original uh, power supply uh, it's AC so nothing fancy with circuitry and rectification inside the box but um, I could find this, an extra one if needed, but it is uh, the part of the original set, if you will. And it's always good to have the original parts. Um, I have to use this adapter, which comes as very handy. Uh, in many cases, I need to plug in a UK uh, type of uh, mains plug and then use the European type on the backside, like this one and plug it into mains. So it's always handy and always useful. So try to keep one of these. And my loyal multimeter shows uh, roughly 20 volts coming out of the power supply. Remember this is AC, no polarity. Um, I've read somewhere over the internet that uh, if you don't have the original power supply for the uh, electron then you can use a DC um, power supply from another machine. Um, the only thing is that it should be more than 14 volts in order for the machine to be able to split minus 5 and plus 5. In any case, uh, since this is working, I'm going to check the machine with this uh, original one and I'm not going to do any experiment, I'm um, not going to conduct any experiment today. Um, but it's good to know now what impressed me um, from the very beginning is the condition of this particular machine I mean it looks so clean and so uh, intact and uh, very nice condition like it has seen limited use on the 
left side we can find the TV tuner output already I have plugged in uh, the RCA for the composite out um, next to it is the RGB output and far uh, left uh, we can find the cassette um, interface connector uh, which is a 17 um, connector we use for getting uh, loading programs and saving programs onto the cassette um, and games of course and on the back we can find just one uh, expansion port which is a bare PCB um, connector right here we can uh, plug in several peripherals um, and on the far right side only the power input um, and that's pretty much what it is um, this computer was a budget computer um, that was the idea in the first place to make a budget computer to compete with other computers like the ZX Spectrum the Acorn Electron is the little brother of uh, this model, the BBC, um, which was a big hit in the UK, of course, around Europe as well back then. But it was expensive, an expensive, a very efficient uh, machine with great um, uh, basic language, the BBC language, which was also adopted for it, uh, its little brother, the Electron later on and so the idea was indeed to produce after this big hit the BBC um, a budget computer a cheaper computer if you will for the mass market and uh, the brain behind the um, conception of these and the whole campaign was actually Chris Carey who was a former Sinclair employee okay let's go now and fire it up uh, what do you think? And uh, I'm going to leave the uh, natural sound in the lab for you to listen to this distinctive beep that it makes um, the electron every time it's powered up. The sound comes from um, a built-in speaker um, the electron has limited sound capabilities just one channel a tiny little yellow lead comes up every time it's powered on and we have the right put uh, sequence and signal on the TV and I'm very happy with it um, so it doesn't look good only from the outside but also it looks like we have all the keys working and everything um, now I'm going to uh, hit some keys and then write a silly code again to check uh, the basic that the basic is actually can output the right things and I guess uh, we are fine uh, the computer is really in great great condition and I will take advantage of this uh, introductory tape um, and get something loaded and run but now that I think of it, I uh, cannot recall any cassette player cable inside the box, was it? Um, I think the whole set is not <laughs> complete then. So no tape cable um, along with the machine. Um, that's okay. I think we can go ahead and build our own cable. What do you think? Um, it's going to be simple task if I manage to find the right schematics around the internet or somewhere and uh, build my own cable. And that will be it. But since um, I am a retro guy, I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. Before I go over the internet uh, looking for information, I'm going to start looking at the manual. The good thing about old manuals is that they had or they used to have plenty of technical information um, inside. So what we can see uh, basic and uh, keywords and uh, uh, how to program, how to go through 
from basic to assembly language and all that how to set up your computer is here very first uh, bunch of pages and then we should look for sound and technical specs uh, let's uh, take a look at the... I th okay this is it here is the uh, cassette interface on page 8 so we have the pins that we need we don't even have to surf over the internet um, again today looking for information what a great way to write manuals back then so we have all the signals that we need here I think today I'm going just to use the common ground and the input from cassette that means pin 2 and 3 only because what I care about today is uh, loading something the introductory tape to be uh, exact and um, I'll leave the saving operation for some other day so I can make another cable later on so let's go ahead uh, what we need uh, look at the spares and uh, find um, 17 connector mail I have already done that <laughs> and uh, I had one and one mono jack to get connected to the tape um, uh, the cassette player and so we can probably make it in no time we can build our own cable get the computer connected to the um, cassette player and load the introductory tape hopefully without any problems and um, revive this old little computer tonight and so since uh, I'm going to need only loading capability tonight I'm gonna be using only uh, just a couple I mean of uh, wires uh, this uh, black one which is a bit thicker is going to be common ground uh, and the orange one will be the signal and um, um, I have pushed those two into a shrink wrap so I can uh, make it look better and more reliable like this I'm gonna keep pushing them a bit further into the shrink wrap and then I'm gonna start soldering one end will be uh, onto the 17 connector pin 2 is common ground right in the middle of it and pin 3 is um, the um, audio in so that the uh, sound comes or the program comes from the tape uh, player the cassette player into the computer so on the other end of course is the mono jack simple uh, will get the sig the program the sound from the cassette player to the computer so all we need is those two connections I'm gonna start soldering in a while both ends and uh, hopefully we can start uh, loading in a while now the way I'm going to do this um, pin 3 and uh, pin 2 are already connected um, the way I'm going to do this uh, will give me some space to work in the future so I'm going to pull out the plastic cover and I can put uh, 1 and 4 tied together in order to have a saving operation if needed with another mono jack on the other side back in the 80s it was uh, kind of standard to use 5D or 7D uh, connectors for getting uh, the uh, signals from and to the cassette player but if I remember this right 5D was pretty much uh, standard 7D is kind of rare and um, if I do remember this right 7D was used also on uh, Auric 1 and Atmos models uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, Dragon and TRS-80 uh, used to have 5D connectors instead but anyways um, that was uh, ancient history um, we have prepared our cable and we can go ahead and start uh, loading the introductory tape at last okay I think we're ready and uh, if I remember this right the composite out 
just uh, gives us black and white signal. It's not only the cursor key that we've seen and the logo before. I think the whole program and whatever is on the screen is going to be black and white because of the composite. And that's why I put on this right next to it on the side on the um, other port the TV tuner so we can see and check some color if it is so and uh, let's uh, hit load and do the magic and see if this actually is working fine um, and again I think the composite gives us black and white signal only I haven't used it before but uh, that's what I've heard and that's what I've read and so I'll switch at some point to the TV tuner channel 36 and check if the color is right although I'm pretty sure that the TV modulator after all these years is gonna be kind of fuzzy or anything but um, we can sure try um, okay Ooh, we have some indication of life here introduction 0102 uh, needless to say it's the first time I'm loading uh, something on the Electron so it reminds me very much of the blocks the Amstrad is loading by the time it is loading but I haven't done this before and apparently the introductory cassette looks like it's working fine and so the cable <laughs> and so I'm very happy let's see if we can complete the loading process and check uh, if we have uh, the first uh, chapter or whatever it is on this tape on the screen and then I can like I said I'm gonna go back to the TV tuner instead of the composite and check uh, the colors on the screen so there is uh, this indication that I should stop the cassette by myself does your cassette recorder has a motor no um, and yes we have the program running so it was loaded successfully but like I was uh, thinking and telling you about uh, it is black and white and uh, but okay I'll switch to the TV tuner and check the colors but uh, um, what I have to be uh, happy about and thankful about this at this point is that the cassette is loaded the cable works the tape works and everything and here is the TV tuner output to the TV which is like um, I was <laughs> hoping it wouldn't be this way but it's fuzzy but we can see the colors and yes the list of programs that can be found onto the tape we can see uh, training for the keyboard we can see piano recreational educational programs <laughs> as well clock application patterns uh, Mars Lander sounds like a game to me bugs up sounds even more like a game to me the island the planets uh, well I think I'm very pleased and happy at this point again okay I couldn't help it and so I have reloaded the cassette and uh, switched to the TV tuner so I can check the loading process again and uh, the colors this time so we can see the image now coming out via the uh, TV modulator and I think it looks distorted but we can see colors and I think I'll stick to this um, uh, until I can somehow someday construct some RGB cable in the near future taking a good look under the hood now we have issue 2 uh, machine um, I was thinking of that but I didn't know which issue was it um, and you can see how robust and reliable the keyboard is we have a connector with uh, decent ribbon cable and a decent PCB to hold the keys in place 
very robust, very nice construction, um, a quality uh, keyboard um, whatsoever. Um, and if I might add, this is one of the strong points of this computer. And I think it is a great chance to take a look at the uh, heart of the system since we have it already open. Uh, the 6502A microprocessor, one of the best of its kind back in the day. Great reputation uh, for this um, particular uh, microprocessor chosen by Acorn back then. Classic TV modulator, composite out, RGB out cassette input output circuitry here uh, great quality for the PCB and the materials used um, looks clean and neat this is the relay for the control of the cassette player some glue logic chips and four 4164s uh, if you sum it all up it's 32k of RAM here at this point um, and this is the ROM. Uh, the other ROM is missing because we are talking about the issue 2 electron. Uh, only previous models used to have a couple of chips there. The ULA is missing because <laughs> I I wanted to clean the contacts. Um, that is the um, that was the um, ULA compartment. And here is the power supply which uh, grabs the uh, AC current, rectifies and feeds minus 5 and uh, plus 5 onto the board very clean neat um, you can work with it um, easily not heavily populated PCB the trimmer for the TV uh, signal um, adjustments um, again the um, video chip couple of <coughs> crystals and that's pretty much what it is efficient and um, uh, reliable only four or five electrolytic capacitors if you decide to go ahead and recap it um, again the um, I like the modular uh, design the uh, uh, power supply can be detached the PCB can be detached and it's not mixed uh, like it was for example with a ZX Spectrum again or the Commodore 64 everything onto a single board. I like this modular design very much. You take off this one, you get a, a replacement or you fix it, then you don't have to uh, do anything um, onto the board, the main board. And this is the loudspeaker again with uh, the plug. You can detach it, put another one into its place and um, if something goes wrong and that will be all yeah I like this design very much uh, very efficient very reliable I like it okay and this is day two playing and uh, fooling around with the electron and as I was about to edit the video um, uh, I was telling about it uh, to a friend and this friend came by and he dropped me something he told me wait until I can bring something to you a donation a kind donation from Nick thank you very much Nick uh, this is chess um, a game for the Electron because Nick used to have the Electron um, <laughs> back in the day when he was a kid and again thanks for the donation uh, highly appreciated and so I think I'm going to spend the rest of this second evening with the Electron playing a nice game of chess and I want to thank you all for watching and um, please do consider subscribing and if you like this stuff uh, please write down your ideas comments or anything I'll be catching you soon with another video another restoration or presentation soon bye